right, I want to start by giving all glory, honor, praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahushan, Bahashim, Rekha HaKodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles, the great millstone. Salutations to the elect out there, wherever you may be. All right, I want to do a quick lesson going into the folly of idolatry and the devising of idols. All right, we're going to start in Wisdom of Solomon 14. I'll start at verse uh, 9. All right. Verse 9, it says, it says, For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. It says, for verse 10, For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. You see? So all you that make all these idols out here and worship these idols, you're going to be punished. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles, you see, shall there be a visitation. Because in the creature of God, they are become an abomination and a stumbling block to the souls of man and a snare to the feet of the unwise. This is verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life. You see, so when these when the people out here make idols is corrupting the ways of life. You see. All right, verse 13, it says, For neither were neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. For by vainglory of man, for by the vainglory of man, this is verse 14, for by the vainglory of man they entered in the world, and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. You see? And they're going to come shortly to an end because the Most High is going to get rid of all these idols. You see? <clears throat> all right, let's 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 play a video. Let's go to the video. Uh, you want to play this video? Then I'll hit a few more scriptures. <clears throat> Seven minutes long. All right, let's see. Let me start it from the beginning. All right, let's play it. You can call me crazy, but do you not think that this looks like this? And do you not think that this thing right here bears an awful resemblance to this thing right here? For those of you who are not familiar with what has just happened, every four years, 56 countries come together and they put on a smaller version of the Olympics. It's called the Commonwealth Games. And this year at the opening ceremony, which was hosted in my country in England, do you know what they did? They brought out a 32-foot bronze bull and then a big crowd of people got down on their knees and began to worship this bull. Now I know exactly what you're thinking. You're saying, Joe, it's just a piece of art. Calm down, sit down, and be quiet. Well, can I say this? If Moses, when he noticed that the people of Israel, after being gone for just five minutes, they turned and worshipped a golden calf. If Moses slammed down the Ten Commandments and his face was filled with rage, is it wrong for me to just simply ask the question, what on earth is going on right now? Okay, I do admit that this could all be one big coincidence. But personally, I do find it rather suspect that right now, in the world we live in, we have never seen more spiritual darkness. We have never had more people in the world who are anti-God, who hate the God of the Bible, and do everything that is opposite to what the God of the Bible commands. And then we tune in on TV, and we see millions of people tuning in to see a big bunch of actors worshipping a bronze bull in a ceremony. Why is that so strange to me? Because there is one God, when there was times of darkness in the Bible, there is one God that the people of Israel repeatedly went back to worshipping over and over again, and it grieved God's spirit. What was this God's name? Baal. And what animal was Baal? You've guessed it, he was a bull. But actually, this goes a lot deeper than just a bunch of people worshipping a bull idol. When Jesus Christ was talking about Satan, do you know what name he gave to Satan? He called him Beelzebub. 
In other words, you are Baal. You are the prince of demons. And that is so scary because when Moses found the people of Israel worshipping this gold calf, what did that represent? It meant that those people were worshipping Satan. When King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, when they introduced the worship of Baal worship to the people of Israel, what were they introducing the worship of? They were encouraging people to bow down to Satan. When Elijah confronted those 450 prophets of Baal. Who was he challenging? He wasn't just confronting 450 men. No, he was confronting 450 men who work for Satan. So if this is how it looks, what is it that the BBC is doing? The BBC is encouraging people to worship Satan on live TV. But hey now, there is actually another instance where bulls are described rather negatively. The Bible says, many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. Now, you're not gonna- Now, that was from the new, the new King James Version Bible that he just quoted that scripture from. But it goes to, it's supposed to say, in the original version, it says dogs. You see this verse right here? Psalms 22 and 12, that's the new King James Version. But this, as a matter of fact, let's see, supposed to be, let's go to Psalm 22. What verse was that? Verse 12, let's see, it says bulls, but it's really dogs, which goes into the enemy nations of Israel. 22 and 12. All right, which, let's see, which this is King David prophesying about Yahawashai. See, no, no. Well, no, he, he's right, it does, it did, it's a lucky, it did say bulls, you know, strong bulls will be shining, have be set, be round about, yeah. But there's another verse where it talks about, I thought he was going to the one, where it talks about dog or self compassion about so lucky. All right, so yeah. There is one that I mentioned, but it was King David prophesied about Yahweh Shabbat. Yeah, it goes into the end. Yeah, this goes into the enemies of Israel because King David was a king of Israel and he was talking about himself being afflicted. So, yeah, he was right. It did mention bulls. Rounded me, strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me, which were the enemies of King David. They were described as bulls, the bulls of Bashan. Not the animals, the 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 beast, the, not the actual bulls of Bashan, but the enemies of of Bashan, which goes into the enemies of Israel, the enemies of King David. Now you're not going to believe this, but literally last week, me and my friend got charged at by a cow. We're on a sort of popular walk that's known as a family-friendly route, and we notice a large pack of cows, about 15 of them, and they were feeding their calves. But what was particularly disturbing is that there was one large bull. Now this wasn't an. All right, I'm gonna stop the video right here because he goes into like you know different stuff. Well, you know, it's basically the point was in the beginning. And he's his point, yeah, the worshiping of idols. All right, let's go get another scripture. Let's get us some precepts. All right, it says the folly of idolatry. Let's see. All right, the folly of idolatry. All right, let's read a few verses. In Isaiah 44 and verse 9, all right, let's read. It says... They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and they and their delectable things shall not profit, and they are their own witness witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed, you see. So all the idols of the all the idols of the of the world have no power. They see not nor hear not. They are all vanity. There's only one true power. All right. Verse ten: Who have formed a god, or a molten graven, or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? All right. Verse eleven: Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and they, and the workmen, they are all. I mean, they are of men, and the work. Read it again. And the workmen, they are all of, of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. 
yet they shall fear and they shall be ashamed together. You see? So all those that create idols that neither see, that neither see nor hear, they're going to be ashamed to find out that their idols have no power. No real power. Verse 12. The smith with his tongues both worketh in the coals and fashion it with hammers and worketh it with a, the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry and his strength faileth. He drink no water and is faint. The carpenter scratch. The carpenter scratcheth out his ruler. He marketh it out with a line. He lifted it with planes and mark and maketh it out with a compass and make it after the figure of a man, you see, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in his house, which is what an idol, you see, and it goes back to what, that uh, that Jesus Christ character, that JC character, that deceived the whole nations, that deceived all the nations of the earth, all right, let's keep reading, verse 14, he heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest. He planted an ash, and the rain doeth nourish it. You see, even in the woods they have idols. Even in the forest they make up idols. These heathen nations, these Gentiles. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindle it and bake it bread. Yea, he make it a god and worship it. He make it, it a graven image and fall it down there unto, you see, being simple because they're fools. He burned a part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roast it roast and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself and saith, Ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire, you see. So he doesn't realize that what he just made into an idol is 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 vanity. You see, verse 17, and the residue thereof, he maketh a God, even his graven image, and he followed down unto it, and worship, worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, deliver me, for thou art my God, you see, but that idol can't deliver him, it has no power. Verse 18, they have not known nor understood, for he hath shed their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand you see and that's a lot of these people out here they make these idols and they don't understand nor see that they have no power that there's just something that was that's made of their hands not knowing that themselves the person that made the idol was was made you see the most eyes has, has blind them they cannot see and the, they don't have a mind to understand that what they have made has no power it's just it's vanity all right let's keep reading Verse 19, and none consider in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burnt part thereof in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have eaten roast, I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stalks of the tree? You see? So none, they don't consider that what they were worshiping is 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 nothing, is vanity. Verse twenty, he feedeth on ash. A deceived heart hath turned him aside. You see, because they have deceived hearts, the Most High has gave them a heart to not realize that what they're worshiping is not a real God. It's just an idol and an image. It's made from the hands of man. It's vanity. All right. Let's keep reading. That he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there a lie in my right hand? You see? So the Most High gives these people out here deceived hearts to the point where they don't even know that it's a lie to believe that that idol or that God that they made has any power. And there's a lot of people out here. That's why the Most High is going to visit you, you idols and you false gods of these nations. He's going to destroy all of you. And he's going to be glorified to be the true and living power in the name of Yahweh Shai. All right, I'm going to end the lesson here. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakadash, Shalom.